What I'm going to do over here is to work through the assignment for week one. Um, I've made a couple of small changes from the original version, so make sure that you have downloaded the, um, the current version of this. It will make following this just a little bit easier. The first thing is we're going to work with the version of this where we've randomized um, schools. We have a two-level study. I'm going to right-click over here, and I'm going to assign the label schools and students. We said that the ice, the first of all, the effect size is a standardized mean difference divided by the total standard deviation, and that that value is um, is 0.4. So we'll put in 0.4 over there. We said that the ICC for schools is 0.19, so we'll put in that. We said that there are one covariate at each level, that the R-square for the top covariate is um, going to be 0.2, and the one for the second covariate is going to be 0.4, that the cost for schools is $1,000 per school, and the cost for students is $100 per student. Then over here, we click Options, and we set the overall mean for the control group is 500. And the span of scores for students within schools, we said that students within schools have a standard deviation of 90. The span is simply for standard deviation, so that's going to be a span of 360, which is 90 times 4. The questions then can be answered fairly simply. Um, if the ICC for schools is 0.19, what is the span of school means? We can see over here that span is 174.4 points. And if we assume a mean of 500 for the control group, what is the range of the school means? Well, they range from 412.82 to 587.18. Now again, the only reason that um, we're computing the span and the range is to make sure that those values are plausible. Uh, simply using the ICC, we could compute the power. And we don't need to know the span or the range, but it's important for the purpose of putting all of this in. Okay. As I said before, the only reason that we want to compute the spans is to make sure that the values that we're getting are plausible. At this point, we actually have the values because the program gives them to us. But I'm going to show you here how you can actually get the same values using Excel. And this is actually what the program is doing. Um, we're going to put in a row called schools. We're going to put in a row called students. And we're going to put in a row called total. We know that the total, and then we're going to have a column called standard deviation and a column called variance. We know that the standard deviation, the total standard deviation is 100, and we know that because the instructions said that the standard deviation for student scores across schools is 100. Uh, we know that the standard deviation for student scores within schools is 90, because the instructions gave us that information as well. So what we need is the standard deviation for school means. Now, um, while it might seem tempting to simply take 100 minus 90 and get 10, that would be incorrect because the standard deviations are not additive. Rather, what we need to do is to move over to the column for variances. The total variance of student scores is 100 squared, so that's equal 100 squared, which is 10,000. The, the variance for student scores within schools is going to be 90 squared, which is going to be 8,100. And then the variance for schools we can get by subtraction. That's going to be equal to 10,000 minus 8,100, which is 1,900. Once we have the variance for schools, we can get the standard deviation for schools by taking the square root of the variance. So that's equal to the square root of the variance, which is 43.5. Then we want to have a column which gives us the span. The span is simply equal to four standard deviations. So that's going to be equal to 43.58 times 4. 
and the same for students and the same for the total. Okay, so what we see over here is that the span of student scores across schools is 400. That means that 95% of the student scores are going to fall in a range uh, that goes from um, a range of 400 points, which is going to be 200 points below the mean and 200 points above the mean. The range, the span of um, student scores within classes is going to be 360. And the span of school means is going to be 174.35, which is the same value that we saw over here for the span. To go from the span to the range, all that we need to do is take the span and center it about the mean. And the way that we can do that is we can put over here and say that the mean is 500. then the lower limit for the range is going to be equal to the mean minus the standard deviation times 2 and the upper is going to be equal to the mean plus the standard deviation times 2 and we can do that for students we can do that for the total the information that we were asking for was for the schools. We get a lower and upper range limit of 412 and 587. Same numbers we saw over here, 412 and 587. And that would be the number that the assignment is, um, is looking for. The next thing that the assignment asks for is using the optimal design wizard, compute the most cost effective Use the optimal design wizard to compute the most cost-effective studies that will yield power of at least 90%. If we randomize schools, what are the number of schools per condition, the number of students per school, and the cost per study? The first thing we have to do is to come back over here and to set this to 90%. Then we click Optimal Design Wizard. We're going to use the um, wizard to find the optimal number of schools and students. We click Compute. And the program shows that uh, we can get power of 90% at a cost of $102,000. We're going to paste those numbers in and close it. We're looking at 34 schools and 5 students per school. And then the second question was if we uh, block students and randomize schools, what will be the number of schools and the number of students per condition and the cost of the study? Well, we come back over here. We right-click over here. We say randomize students rather than randomize schools. So now we've blocked at the top level. Now we need to add the span of effects. And we said in the instructions that these span 0.30. And we can see down here that that means that if the overall effect is 0.4, then the effect across schools is going to range from 0.25 to 0.55. We click Optimal Design Wizard. We click Compute. I neglected to set this cost to 1,000, which we need to do. Click Compute. And the program tells me that I can actually get a study for $28,000 that's going to have power of higher than 90%. Um, and that's going to have 10 schools and nine students per school. I paste that number in, I close it, and I get power of 91% at a cost of $28,000. So that would be the answer. And you can see in this example that by blocking at the top level, if that actually turns out to be an option, you can save a, a substantial amount of money. That is often um, going to be the case, but the reason that we sometimes consider uh, ran cluster randomized trials is because blocking is not an option. As I explained in the manual, the primary um, issue in deciding whether or not you can block at the top level is not going to be the fact that it might save you money. Typically, it will save you money. It's going to be whether or not it affects the validity of the study. Often, the reason that we go to a cluster randomized trial is that we want to avoid contamination um, at the school level or because the intervention that we're planning 
is not an inter- is an intervention that needs to be administered at the school level. One school has one curriculum, another school has a different curriculum, and blocking is simply not um, possible. But as in this example, if blocking is a viable option, it typically will save a substantial amount of money. So that is how we got the answers to the assignment. And um, if you have any questions, please obviously post them to the board, and I will see you soon.